Let's talk about Gravity by John Mayer. Hey, what's going on? My name is Daniel McLaughlin. Welcome back to the YouTube channel. If you're new around here, maybe you came from the John Mayer Sob Rock Gravity backing track or, you know, from wherever you came from. Welcome. In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to approach gravity in three different ways, beginner, intermediate, and advanced. It's a song that's definitely impactful to me as a guitar player. I played this song on my senior recital when I was at USC. Uh, I have taught this song to many students, just given that it's a excellent vessel for a lot of information that you can learn from it. And I think a big reason why it's such a revered song is because it's appreciable from all levels of music. Now when I say that, I think it's a song that we can ultimately come back to over and over as we grow as guitar players. And I think the same has happened with John Mayer too. If you take a look at how this song was performed over the years, given its, you know, almost 20 year life, it's gone through a couple iterations. Continuum, there were horns, a different drummer, going into kind of the born and raised Paradise Valley when a lap steel was incorporated. I think he started to embrace the melodic motif that happens at the end of the song a little bit more. <laughs> But it wasn't really until 2017 when I noticed he started to mess with the chords and the harmony a little bit more. We saw the introduction of a, uh, a minor four chord uh, at the beginning of the song where he goes. And then a minor four here. The first time I heard that I was at the forum in LA uh, with a bunch of my uh, music school classmates and we were all geeking out over the reharm. So now enter this most recent Saab Rock tour where you've got musicians like Greg Fillingaines and Isaiah Sharkey who are providing a lot of the harmonic support and you get this crazy reharmonization of the solo. All of a sudden we have diminished chords, we have flat five sharp 11 chords, we have inversions being delivered by Pino. And all that being such a surprise being played to a song we're fairly familiar with. So all that to say that I'm now re-inspired to be into this song again as someone who's been playing guitar for 15 years. And yet I'm still teaching this song to beginners as well because it's so approachable. So in this video, I wanna go over three different approaches to solo over gravity in an improvisational blues solo way like John Mayer does at his shows. Let's get into it. All right, to start off soloing over gravity as a beginner, um, maybe you've learned a scale called the pentatonic scale. Maybe you've even learned a scale called the blues scale. They're very similar. So if we were to approach the G minor pentatonic, sounds like this. And if we were to play the G blues scale, it would just be an addition of two notes. There's that walk up right there. There it is again. So all together sounds like this. That scale is gonna keep you busy all throughout soloing over this song. Playing the minor pentatonic over a major chord is a very blues oriented sound, especially playing this, this flat seven note right there. That's all blues scale right there. So that's going to work over the entirety of gravity, really, as long as you are engaging your ears and you're listening to where maybe certain notes won't be the best choice, especially in the sob rock backing track. Because the changes move so much, it's going to make you sound like you're playing complex, but occasionally you might hit a bummer note. So try and listen to see what notes do work and don't work. In addition to that scale, I would challenge you to learn how to play the major scale in sixths. So this may be taking it a step further than what you're used to, but if you know the major scale and you know how to play it on the high E string from this G on the third fret right here. See if you can sound out the sixths intervals that are right here. Up, oh, right there. This interval is the bread and butter of a blues musician. Um, being able to play things like this. Or even this. See 
how many you can find across the neck. It'll be a great challenge, a great goal to reach before you move on to the intermediate level. So at the intermediate level, I think you would know what the major pentatonic is, what the minor pentatonic is, the blues scale. Maybe you're getting a little bit more into modes and you know what the mixolydian scale sounds like, or at least maybe looks like you're practicing through it. Um, at this stage, I would think that it's a great time to be practicing parallel pentatonic shapes. Maybe you're more used to playing the minor shape than the major shape. So we have this for the G minor pentatonic, but then when we want to go to G major pentatonic, maybe you play the relative minor, right? So we're playing effectively E minor pentatonic, sounding like G major pentatonic, right? That is technically G major pentatonic. And at that place, you can do some of those cool blues movements. That definitely sounds G major to me. However, one of the cool things you can do is use parallel scales to make some of your lines sound more motific. So when you're playing, Maybe that's over G major. And then as it shifts up to the C major chord, maybe you go. And all of a sudden you've transitioned your major motif into a minor motif and you've called back and you've developed that melody. So practicing this can be a little bit of a challenge sometimes. What I would do is like set a metronome and just. up a major scale and coming back down a minor scale, maybe go up a minor scale and then go down the major scale. And then when it's time, you know, put it to the backing track and play major pentatonic for the G chords, play minor pentatonic for the C chords. In the sob rock backing track, you can pretty much play the G minor pentatonic over the entire, you know, complex changes area and it'll still sound like you're playing cool music. So the other thing I would look towards in this stage of intermediacy <laughs> is um, bending towards chord tones. So I think we've all heard something like this. Right? Effectively, I mean, I bent up to the seventh scale degree. So when I do that, right here on the fifth fret of the B string, I'm bending to this F sharp here, right here on. The F sharp is the leading tone of the scale, basically the the uh, the seventh scale degree, uh, which gives such like a like an unresolved but like lilty feeling, because that's also the note that makes a major seven chord sound kind of so pretty. In that regard, targeting things like the blue note, um, or even taking it as far as bending from the minor third to the major third to make that C major to G major change happen. You can get some pretty powerful lines using techniques like that. I also think in this stage, it's a good time to start listening to how other people may interpret the song. Maybe grab some licks from some of your favorite players. Uh, maybe grab some licks from John Mayer himself. There's another video that I did like on a John Mayer uh, lick that you can grab. I think it'll be here, there, right over there. But truly listen to other players play this song or other six, eight blues songs and pull some licks from them. Uh, that's called transcription. And it's like one of the greatest ways you can develop as a musician quickly. Definitely stick around to the end because I'm going to be featuring some of my friends playing over this song who are going to interpret it a little bit differently than I do. All right, and finally, here's how I would approach this song in an advanced way. First of all, a quick disclaimer that we could take this so much further than what I'm going to get into right now. We could be superimposing backdoor turnarounds over the two fives and then, you know, hitting every diminished run with some sort of um, sweep, <laughs> sweep lick or whatever. You know, we've got this D flat sharp 11, which would be a good opportunity to use Lydian dominant. I'm saying all this a little bit in jest to say, you can take it further. Let's go ahead and take it back though. Let's take it where like maybe John Mayer 
would top out, you know? Because we all know John Mayer plays the blues, plays the blues really well. That's why uh, he's an admirable guitar player. I think he does his lane very, very well. And now to start with how an advanced player would approach this solo, um, I think you are best to start off with knowing where your dynamic is going. So this is a little bit of a gear thing too, because guitar dynamics are a whole thing. Uh, a lot of it comes from starting in a low gain, low on the neck territory, maybe playing softer, playing slower, especially as the song opens up or as the solo section opens up. As the song progresses, maybe you get a little bit higher on the neck, maybe you change the pickup, maybe you engage your clon or <laughs> your whatever gain stage you've got that takes you into that next level of playing. And all of a sudden you can get kind of shred mode. All of a sudden you can start developing motifs, which is a great thing to be doing when taking an elongated solo, like I would consider this one. This is not an eight bar solo. This is a three minute long solo. So you need to have stuff for people to latch onto. And you can hear John Mayer masterfully doing this by playing a melody and then playing that same melody maybe 12 frets up the neck. Maybe he's doing some sort of alteration. Something like that would sound like this. If you notice, I took this and I put that down here. Effectively developing the motif. And then as you get that dynamic build a little higher and higher, maybe you're going further up the fretboard, you've got all of your gain stages on or how many you feel like you wanna have that's appropriate for the song. Maybe you've switched either to the bridge pickup, which is what a lot of people do if they're not John Mayer. John Mayer actually flips to the, the neck pickup a lot of the times. Now, once you're at this fever pitch, you're at this dynamic height, this is where you're going to engage some of your uh, lick patterns, maybe some of your repetitive licks. If you've got a cool head, you can bend up here and hold bends for a long time. It's a really good way of building the energy without necessarily having to shred, you know? Sometimes that can get a little fatiguing on both us and the listener. And then at this point, this is maybe where you want to have a dismount in mind. How are you getting out of this solo? With gravity, you've got one kind of baked in, which is great. You've got this thing. will end your song. So I do want to briefly touch on some of the changes that you can play. If you don't know, playing changes is a little bit of a jazz word, but it it basically means arpeggiating chords and playing chord tones near exclusively, uh, or at least highlighting them. So I think that there is a good opportunity to maybe find a couple of the chord tones within the diminished chord that happens in the sob rock backing track. The diminished chord is a G, diminished, it moves up here. So to that, you can play this scale. Now, however you find that, you may just want to identify and target certain notes that you can get to easily so that you can highlight the fact that there's a diminished chord happening. This is also a really good time for you to start figuring out what you sound like and what you like to play and what you like to put into a solo that represents how you sound. You know, maybe you do like playing with a clean tone and superimposing a lot of other chords on top of certain chords. Maybe you do like going all, you know, bluesed out shred fest. At this stage, it's also a good place to be listening to other players and see how they interpret the song. Or if they've got a song in 6-8 that they play, uh, blues oriented towards, maybe steal a couple licks from them. Start to incorporate that into your playing and then start to find melodic development. All of a sudden that starts to sound like you. All of a sudden you start to sound like you. It's just always a good opportunity to listen to other players that you like and see how you can incorporate that into your own playing. So in that regard, let's go ahead and cut to a couple players that are gonna interpret the gravity solo in their own way. Let's check it out. 